I'm going to talk to you from this beautiful, spiritual, historical, extraordinary location about authenticity in action. I thought this is kind of one of the places where you can let go of your mask, your armor, engage with nature, relate with nature, and be everything that is you. So I thought I'd talk about Stoic philosophy and how it can help you to kind of release yourself, yeah, to be authentic. Because to me, it's not as if people need to find their authenticity. We're already authentic inside of us. The problem is the presentation of the authenticity. It's the fear of how others might react if. And so we limit ourselves. We kind of, we present either a pale imitation of ourselves or we present an entirely absurd kind of created essence of ourselves based around what we think will fit with the environment or will be safe or will be approved of. Or maybe we'll simply allow us to get on with the day without having to justify ourselves, all that kind of stuff. And so we kind of go through the day as an actor on a stage. You know, it's Shakespeare, right? All the world's a stage. And it's fatiguing to do that. <laughs> because you have to remember the things that you've presented on stage. And this is just an exhausting nonsense. But we do it because it kind of delivers, right? It delivers sufficient to make us carry on doing it day after day. To the point where eventually you're not even sure where the real you is and where the authentic you is. And that's where this kind of quest for authenticity comes from. It's not as if you're finding it. It's more like you're trying to remember it because it was there all along. It's just that you became so adept at presenting a public persona of yourself. And then it's so important that you remain consistent with what it was that you presented yesterday that you kind of get trapped in this story, this, this effigy of yourself. And somewhere deep inside is the authentic you, which is just yearning to go out and, and play. So how does Stoic philosophy help with this? For me, the, the, the reason why Stoic philosophy is so wonderful is that it is giving you a perspective of how kind of irrelevant your ego is, how minor the role your ego plays is, that things are pretty much always mistaken by what we think and take to be us, that there are perspective beyond our ken, that there are things that we simply don't even know we don't know. And so the things that we think we're sure about, the things that we think are us, might not necessarily be so. It's not that Stoic philosophy is saying you don't know anything, but it's simply saying consider the possibility of things that you can't even guess you don't know. And when you get to that perspective of being able to take a step back from yourself, well, then you can start to do that with everybody else as well. And the reason why I think that's so freeing when it comes to authenticity is because we think we know what we are and we think we know what other people are and we think we know how other people are going to react if we release our true self. And it turns out that all of that is a nonsense, that we couldn't possibly guess the things that are going on in the back of other people's minds because they're doing the same thing we're doing. They're also presenting this public persona. They might even feign shock were you to be truly authentic, but that would be an act as well. And so the moment that you can start to see the world through stoic eyes, you can relativize, you can you can look at things with a slightly different perspective. It's not that it's detached, but that it's augmented, it's increased. So rather than seeing it from your narrow perspective, 
you continue to see it from that narrow perspective, but you also see it from other perspectives. You're also able to step outside of your ego and think, well, what is it that I might not be considering? Do I even know the things that I don't know? What could this also mean? And therefore, why would I choose to restrict my truth because of the certainty that I know that if I do, you know, catastrophes might occur when it turns out that I don't know any of that. And so Stoic philosophy is freeing. It's delivering to you many, many different ways of coming to the conclusion that it is far more powerful to simply live whatever your truth is and then see what the result of that is you know, to the point where you can kind of see yourself on your deathbed, wondering about your life, wondering about the things that you said and did, and be able to look from that perspective back onto today and see it in a whole new light, in a new kind of beautiful free light. And so what you're doing is releasing yourself, giving yourself permission To relax into your true self. I think that's maybe a better way of describing it. To simply be. To deliver what you are to all of this. Yeah, to this, to this stunning, stunning world. To understand that somehow you play a part in this. That everybody plays a part in this, that your part may be incredibly minor, but that somehow all of these tiny parts gel together and make the whole. And that it's so vast, there's no way for one of us to comprehend all of that. So why on earth would we limit ourselves? You know, that's the kind of story. When you're sat on your deathbed, do you want to be thinking about all the things that you wish you'd said and done the, the emotions that you had expressed, the thoughts you had expressed, the kindness you had delivered? Or do you just want to be what you are? So that when you get to that day, to the day of your personal reckoning, you can kind of look back and say, well, God, I made some rotten mistakes. But you know, everything felt like me kind of felt like I was doing what I should do in the moment. Turns out I couldn't foresee the future. Turns out I tried to learn from the past, but I wasn't in the past. I was in the present and I was doing what felt right at the time and my life unfurled. And it's a vast, vast, complicated, puzzling, delightful, adventurous, wondrous experience and perhaps I only noticed a half of 1% of it. But boy, did I suck the juice out of life. And all that came from the Greeks and the Romans. <laughs> well, whilst at the same time, of course, the Greeks and the Romans were, were plundering and pillaging. So it's not as if Stoic philosophy suddenly makes you a wondrous individual with no particular goals where you can just philosophize and theorize and, uh, and, and lay back and pontificate to the world, okay? It's, um, it's very practical. And I think that's fantastic too. So, so ultimately, I think Stoic philosophy comes down to getting out of your ego, getting out of what it is that you think you are, and therefore permitting yourself to go play, to go exhibit your truth and see how that feels. Notice the feedback and then course correct. And so the end result is you kind of learn from yourself. You start to trust your intuition in a bigger, better way. You start to remember what it is that you always were. How's that? Yeah. So if you haven't, Go check out Stoic Philosophy. This is this is one of my suggestions. I'm not telling you that it's the um, the keys to the kingdom. I'm not saying that it's everything. Personally, for me, I discovered the Stoic Philosophy kind of on the journey, kind of after the journey, 
and looked at it and thought, hmm, makes a lot of sense. So whether you want to go on your internal journey and then play it through the mirror of the understanding of Stoic philosophy, or whether you want to kind of read the book, experiment with it, play and see what comes back, I don't think it really matters, you know. But the point is to kind of throw away the fear of how others might react to whatever it is that you think is you and go sing and dance and play, you know. Today's never coming again. And what a beautiful day today is. I think that'll do. It's almost a motivational speech. Um, right, so if this sort of thing is of interest, go check out my other videos. Some are kind of existential like this. Some are, some are more uh, hypnotic in nature. Some are more practical. I kind of try and throw them all in the bag and, and jubble them around and see which comes out. So thanks for watching. If it's... Um, nonsense <laughs> right in the comments below if you think it's something that, that you can relate to write that in the comments below and let's see where we get to uh, thank you very much for watching and um see you see you soon just give you a beautiful scan you can see just how tremendous this place is that's why people could live here because there's a river down there all right take care bye